So what's up everyone? Shrust only back in the game to give you guys the final uh, edition of Addictive Keys. I know I said it will make this a five part tutorial, but I'm gonna make it short, make it four parts, finish it, you know, real basic, simple, and clean. All right, so let's get down to business. Mark one, obviously the name tells it all, is um, this was recorded off of a Fender uh, Rose Mark one, which was um, it's like electric piano. If you guys listen to any kind of Stevie Wonder, um, any any like Earth, Wind and Fire, like classic funk R and B soul, anything you, know, you could hear. It, you know. So this Explore map is pretty self-explanatory. Presets, you know, the main presets, and then you got like the different mic settings, and then you have like the more specific presets, like before with the grand piano, or um, that. Yeah, in case you guys haven't watched it, watch it because it will explain to you a lot of the functions. Alright, so let's get down to business. Turn all of these effects off. So normally when you're recording uh, from recording from uh, uh, electric instruments such as this, it has a line out, right? A TRS jack, and then you know you could you have a mono line out, and then uh, that's the way it works. Okay. Um, uh, one more thing about the Mark One, actually, if you guys uh, was it here. Mark one is uh, it makes this unique sound because of you know instead of the hammer hitting the strings it has this tuning fork you know like a metallic metal like stick that hits you know the hammers hit those as shown right over here and those make that sound. Anyways, um, back to recording from an amplifier. So if you have a direct line out then uh, generally you record from an amplifier. And um, when you're recording from an amp, the first thing you do is uh, you always have a dynamic microphone. Um, and the most signature dynamic mic that's used for this is the SM57 or sometimes 58s. And um, I remember I told you guys there are three basic type of microphones, um, dynamic, condenser, and uh, and ribbon right that's used for recording there's other microphones other than that as well you know like there's like laser microphones and all of that but generally we use these three in recording sound dynamic mics are um, like the name says it it could record dynamic sound very well so any kind of uh, sound that has a lot of dynamic range that has a lot of difference in the volume dynamic mics are the go-to so like vocals you know like especially in rock and metal where the where the vocalist is shouting or growling or screaming you know um or um or when you're recording kick drums because kick drums have the a lot of that low oomph right so you use a dynamic mic on those the other mics such as condenser or ribbon they can't handle the deck amount of frequency content so you use a dynamic microphone the negatives of the dynamic microphone is that it's very um, it sounds very compressed the whole um, that's just the way a dynamic microphone sounds it sounds very compressed it has a very good mid-range but the high high frequencies just don't come off that naturally you know that's one of the downsides of it from amp you always have you know a dynamic mic to record from and then you got the ribbon right the cool 4038s right you guys could tell just from a being how much how much more clear the high frequencies on the uh, ribbon mic is and then you have the tube the newman uh u 47s uh, definitely just by uh, again a being with the other mics 
till there's like that warm like high frequency thing that's very characteristic of two condenser mics or bell condenser mics now we got the pzms right here uh, sennheiser sennheiser mke 212s like i explained before because pzms are at a distance pressure zone microphones you know, they just get somewhat of that like uh, not that direct noise but more of the ambient noise you know but it has less phasing issues since there's no reflected and direct sound you know coming to them so that's the reasons people use the pzm you have to place it at a floor or a wall like i said and then finally you have a tube um, that's recording the ambient noise okay and then furthermore you have the direct line out here generally uh, when you're recording any kind of uh, more naturally sounded instruments even if they have a line out let's say for example acoustic guitar people will not record from an acoustic uh the line out they will not really record from there because it sounds very dry and very bland so in a way it sounds very unnatural you know um but on more electric instruments you know such as this one people like to use line out sometimes because it does give you that very dry sound you know like it doesn't give you you know and it doesn't give you any feedback or anything like that and then you have the you have the dimension d uh which is the roland dimension d and this is a very um very uh, signature chorus you know plugin so it gives you that chorus sound people use everywhere on vocals from um to pianos everywhere so it has a very warm chord sound that people like so this is more or less of mark one let's move on to the next one electric grand all right uh electric grand is uh, this electric grand is pretty much um the yamaha cp80s yamaha cp80s because obviously they're a grand piano but it's something that you can uh, very easily portable so when it first came out people just you know went to it bought it so it's an electric acoustic instrument just like it says right here electroacoustic so it has the hammers and everything like that you know and the strings like is in the piano as you guys can see sort of has like a pickup and you know like a piezo pickup if you guys know what that is then it gives it this kind of sound you know again very signature sound in many of uh, many music many pop music so here the mic settings are pretty much the same except that you have like acoustic tube which is placed in the middle of the actual you know like in the inside the inside the hatch you know and then it gives a very uh very direct you know a very uh, echoey sound you guys a b it with everything else and here again you got the line and the dimension d right all of this so that's pretty much the electric grand um and then let's go finally to the session settings um this is where you could change all the tunings of your piano Let's actually go back to the plan. Okay. If you go right here, you could use temperament. If you guys don't know what temperament is, it's basically a name for tuning, especially for tuning the piano. If you guys look here, um, it sh gets sharper, so the tuning gets higher as you go up on the high notes. And generally, uh, the people that professionally tune the piano, right? There's tuners professionally tune the piano. They do this because if it's a little sharper, it's a little higher on the end, it gives that sparkle. People say it gives that sparkle. You know? So sometimes, not only on the piano, but people will actually do this on the guitar as well. You know, on the high strings, they will tune it a little sharp, you know, a little out of tune because they, they say it gives that little sparkle. Again, 
preference. If you want it to be all, all fluid, all equal, then it's called equal temperament. And there's all these different tunings. Some are, some might sound off key because some are, um, you know, there's, there's uh, as many tunings as you guys know how it is. Um, and people use it, you know, like Western scales use only, you know, like um, a certain, I forget the formula, but you, you know, you double every time an octave, right? That's the Western scale. So an A here, uh, A5 will be 440. Um, up the, like, up A6 will be a 880, you know, and the 87 will be 1,600. Uh, no, 1,760, like, so it will double every time, you know, it goes up. But, you know, if you listen to Indian music, they use, like, uh, they use, like, tones in between same tones, you know, like, I forget the name of those. And so if you want that, it's all here. And I believe you could even tune it to wherever your heart's content is, you know. Velocity response is just how um, the velocity units respond to it. So you can act all hard like this or act very soft. No. no I don't think you guys could also move the sliders here. And then X mod source. Remember, I told you guys if you go to the edit menu and you have these small circles. Modulated, you know, and this is uh, tied to the uh, the mod wheel on your uh, MIDI piano if you have it, MIDI keyboard. So you know, all you have to do is press learn, go to it, um, tweak it. Yeah, that's it. After touch, after touch is basically one of those MIDI implementations where it gives you after touch. So, you know, like after you press the piano, if you lift it up a little bit, you know, it has a different sound than if you're continuously pressing down or let go of it all together. So after touch tries to give you more control over your keyboard. MIDI modulation, 6001, self-explanatory, and then you got the pitch wheel. Set to whatever, whatever you want. So, I hope you guys enjoyed everything. If you guys don't understand, ask me something, or if you guys go right here to question mark, there should be a manual. So, refer to the manual. All right, as always, peace out and have a nice day.